The Royal Canal, known as the Green and Silver Line, started life in the 18th century as a major cargo and passenger corridor from Dublin to the River Shannon. With the advent of trains and roads, it went into decline, but since the 1990s, it's been restored into a 145 kilometer inland waterway with 43 working locks. Today, mother and daughter team, Cathy and Annalise, will explore the first 12 locks of the Royal Canal. They'll begin at Spencer Dock and walk the urban route alongside Croke Park and Mountjoy Prison. The canal then winds its way through suburban North Dublin into a rural haven. Cathy and Annalise will navigate the last stretch to the 12th lock by boat. I brought a few essentials with me to get us on our way. Just a little packet of some nuts in case you get hungry and an extra jacket if it's raining and some water. I'm being pretty sensible about it. Well, I've decided to bring my drawing pad with me, with my pencil, so that I can do a few sketches along the route. And I've also got my phone, which is really my camera, to take a few photographs so that we have a record of our adventure. <laughs> We're just really excited to get started now. The walk starts at the sea locks in Spencer Dock. To set Annalise and Cathy on their way is Waterways Ireland's John McKeown, who has overseen the sympathetic restoration of the original Royal Canal. Very very well, nice to meet you. It's a very important location. It's the junction of the tidal River Liffey with the Royal Canal at Spencer Dock. This is where it all starts. Then. This is where it all starts, yeah. We've driven by here so many times, but we've never actually been in this location. Location, bus, yeah. So. yeah. It's amazing to see it Very from good. a different perspective. When was it built? Spencer Dock itself was built in 1873, but the Royal Canal, where it joins up, was completed in 1817. So that's a long time ago. A long time ago, <laughs> exactly. The lock chamber here is a, a very important aspect to it as well, from the point of view it actually gives us navigation from the River Liffey up through to the Royal Canal, and also acts as a flood defence mechanism in order to protect the rising Liffey advancing up the canal. Is this the original lock gate? No, or no, this, this, is... this was restored back in 2007. So this is the start of the Royal Canal navigation, 146 kilometre long navigation with 46 locks. Oh, that is amazing. That's the Lewis Bridge there. That's... That is the Lewis Bridge, yeah. It's the Lewis Bridge that joins from Conley Station down to the Point Devil. All oh, right, I just it looks a little bit like the the tail fin of a whale sort of diving into the sea. You could, you could get that <laughs> shape there, yeah, very much so. The history of this canal in the centre of sort of the redevelopment of Dublin with the, the convention centre here and then got something that's so new and... The, the, the new buildings and the old 200-year-old canal can live in harmony, yeah. They really complement each other. Hopefully you'll enjoy it as you walk along. Fantastic. Yeah, brilliant. <laughs> So, on our way, on our journey, over the bridge. From the first lock, the Royal Canal heads west towards Croke Park Stadium, the home of the Gaelic Aesthetic Association, the GAA. I wonder if the heron will mind us walking by. Well, he's looking a bit wary, isn't he? He's very tame, though. Isn't he? Apparently their beaks are very sharp. And look, you can see Croke Park here. Oh, gosh. Just to see yeah. through the bridge. It looks amazing, doesn't it? You can actually see it says, Welcome to Croke Park, home of the GAA. <laughs> and are they, are they people up on the top there? Yeah, <laughs> they're up on the skyline. They must be, they're probably looking down at us. Blue <laughs> <laughs> <They> wave, hi! <laughs> I was thinking that for teams coming into play in Croke Park, they could just come in and high speed boat up along the canal and stop off at the little dock up here, straight into be, the stadium. That'd be really cool, wouldn't it? Maybe, yeah. A new, new alternative to the team bus. <laughs> <laughs> the skyline of Crook Park provides a perfect bird's eye view of the Royal Canal. Gosh, it's freezing, isn't it? It's I know, really I'm, glad, windy. I'm glad I've got four layers on. Oh, yeah, oh, gosh, look, look, there are the Pigeon House Towers. Yeah, I know. And, and there's. You can see Dolly Mount there as well. With the Dolly Mount, oh, is, that, is that Hoth over there? No, that's Stunnery. Oh, that's <laughs> oh, there's Hout. <laughs> God, look at all the cranes down by the docks over there. Yeah, you can really see how much development's happening, can't you? 
Yeah. That was where we just came from. Like when we were down there, we could see actually everyone up on the skyline here. Well, we better we? follow okay. the skyline around. Okay, yeah, let's, let's go. go. Look, look what it is. It's the Olympic torch. Gosh, that is amazing, isn't it? Yeah. Let's see. see. What does it say? To commemorate the visit of the Olympic torch to Croke Park on June 6, 2012. It's pretty impressive, isn't, isn't it? It yeah. brings back good memories as well. I guess that's probably the closest we'll ever come to having a, a home Olympics. And I'm not crying about London. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, it's so windy. <laughs> it's making my eyes water. <laughs> Look at the canal ahead now. You can see the, the steps of the locks going up. I know, isn't it fantastic? You can actually see the rise of the canal. Well, we head on our way and get on walking. Let's go. I was actually thinking that as I'm walking along here, it's really a really perfect place to go for a run. The track along the canal, you could run up for as long as you wanted, you know, choose how many locks you wanted to go along and then go across and back down the other side. But well, when you look at it, there's an amazing flow on it, isn't there? Yeah. I'd love to have a go at opening one of these locks. It'd be amazing. I think you just wind from Don't there. Do you wind them from there? Yeah. Oh, I think you need a handle or something to yeah. open them up. The second lock is home to the memorial of a renowned character who served time in the local Mountjoy prison. Canal historian Peter Clark has the story. Hiya, Cathy. Hi, Great to meet, Lovely you. to meet you. And welcome yes. to Bins Bridge and the Royal Canal. Now we're under the watchful eye look of Brendan Behan. Poor old Brendan, and one of our greatest writers and poets. And Brendan normally might be looking up that way, you think, like the Mount Joy. But he's, I think he's contemplating where he grew up in Russell Street before he moved out to the country, out to Crumlin. Brendan Behan spent a little bit of time in Mount Joy prison. And, and was it true that he wasn't here? Like he, he wasn't. He no, wasn't. we have him back. We you finally have him back, have him back <laughs> because he spent, he spent 24 hours, I think, on the south side. I'm sure he wasn't absolutely happy about that at all. He didn't like but it. But he's back here now permanently since 2003. And oh, the right, sculpture, of course, is by John Call, and it's a wonderful, wonderful sculpture. If you look closely enough, you can see the names of some of his writings all, all inscribed into it. Does that say the bells of... Bell go ting -a -ling, ling for you, but not for me. Death, where is thy... Sing -a -ling -a -ling. But the triangles represent the triangle in Mount Joy, uh, and we have the old song, and the old triangle goes jingle jangle along the banks of the Royal Canal. And so we're here now, and certainly when we walk up along, we're going to pass Mount Joy, where the old triangle went jingle jangle. the directors of the Royal Canal Company sort of looking towards their own interests, trying to direct the canal by their properties to give them the best possible advantage. And that's true, that's absolutely true. The, the best example of that is the Duke of Leinster because he insisted that it pass right through his estate at which cost the canal hundreds of thousands of pounds at the time. So, Peter, how exactly do these locks work? This is the third lock, he said, it's a double lock. So if you look around, you can see that we have another level up here. And yeah. what happens is that the boat comes into the lock, it fills up, it, the locks close, and it comes down into the water here and comes on down into this. It's exactly like the steps of stairs, the whole way down along as you go along. And it's, you've got a great view here. Like, it's like a waterfall. It's a little mini Niagara Falls. Enjoy the rest of the canal. I know you're going to head up to Crossbone Bridge. Okay. Nice to meet you. It was Take lovely care. to meet you, you yes. too. Bye -bye. Yeah, really lovely to meet you, and thank you for everything today. It's been brilliant. Brendan Bean spent a little bit of time in Mount Joy Prison. I actually came here on a class trip when I was in transition year. I remember that. Yeah, it was, it was very interesting and eye-opening as well. Um, get a tour of the prison.
the Royal Canal broadens out after the fifth lock, making it a valuable amenity for the local Fibsborough Canoe Polo Club. Fizzfest Community and Arts Festival hosts the annual fifth lock cup here. Amazing bit of water here, isn't it? Where they're playing water polo. Yeah, it really, the, the actual canal, it really widens out. What are you drawing there? Um, I'm just doing a sketch of the, of the swans here. But they keep moving, so it's a bit hard to... Uh, I love the ones when they when they stick their heads down to get the weed and all you see is their bottom sticking up in the air. Look, do you see there? Yeah. He's got his bottom and his, his flippers are kind of keeping him down in the water. They like the whistling, don't they? 